Welcome. We are NTCG Luton. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's about his presence. It makes a difference. When he's in the room, it changes. Things change. Woo.
you seek him first and his kingdom and his righteousness everything else everything else will be added but the important thing is to seek him so seek him let me tell you if it's a husband you want Come, hallelujah, the Holy Ghost in our midst. Without the moving of the Spirit this afternoon, we can do nothing. We're just fleshly, oh God, hallelujah, beings. Hallelujah, and you said, God, those that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our midst. You are welcome to take over. You are welcome, hallelujah, to change a service. You are welcome, hallelujah, to speak and change hallelujah. hallelujah we charge your holy ghost in this meeting no holes barred you have all oh, access hallelujah. in our meeting today father we pray oh god for the people online and those that are in the church those that are yet to come oh god we lift up hallelujah our worship to you we come with an expectation oh god we know the week my god some have had wonderful weeks and so they've come with voice raised to praise you Thank others you, have come oh God with a Hallelujah. downcast spirit uh, one of discouragement and are looking to Thank be lifted you, up oh God we lift you up uh, you, in our presence because you say when you'll be lifted up mm. oh God you will yes, draw yes, all Lord. men unto you we pray for Thank those that you, need Father. healing oh yes. God in your presence there is healing yes. oh God we pray for those that want a financial breakthrough you are Jehovah Jireh hallelujah, hallelujah. 
this afternoon. We pray for those, oh God, that just need encouragement. Lord, where your presence is, you said, where your spirit is, there is liberty. Father, unveil your people. Hallelujah. You said, when there is an unveiling, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, you are able to move freely. Move freely in our midst, oh God, hallelujah. Move freely in, oh, hallelujah, your presence, oh God, Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, hallelujah, because God, we want to see a move of you, hallelujah. We want to see people that come in today, oh God, that need a lifting, be lifted up. When they leave today, may they say, oh God, how wonderful it was to come into the presence of God. Father, I put my dancing garment on, hallelujah, because, oh God, we are there, oh, hallelujah, your presence is, there shall be a dancing and a singing, oh God, I forget everything that has happened, and oh God, I give you glory, because you are worthy to be praised, lay the seats, oh God, as your people sit, let the spirit of the living God fall on them, move on them, activate them, revive them, and renew them, Lord, we thank you. You. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come against every spirit of distraction. Let our hearts and minds be set on you as we come to give you glory. Let there be nothing. Let there no, be no hindrance, oh God, obstructing your move. Hallelujah. This afternoon. Take full control, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Walk through the church. Find where the enemy has lurked. Find where the enemy, hallelujah, has laid traps and bombs. Find where the enemy, hallelujah, has come and set up his demons to disturb our meeting. Father, we take full control. Oh God, yes, Lord. I say today we are overcomers. We are victors. And every person that walks in here and is online, oh God, if there's a breakthrough, you receive it. If there's a miracle, you receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, hallelujah, the Lord God is Lord over this service today. Hallelujah. As we give you thanks, oh God, in no other name than the name of Jesus. We we praise you and we lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord God. We bless you, we honor you, we lift you up. We magnify your name, Jesus. Have your way in our midst, have your way, have your way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes, Father, we thank you, Lord. Glory to Hallelujah. your great name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your great name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I would just like to Thank you, Holy greet the Trinity. Thank you, Holy Thank I would like to greet uh, the leadership and the headship of this house. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Reverend Cox and his dear wife and family and all of the associate ministers Thank you, Holy that reside here in this house. Thank you, Lord. And... I just want to greet you in the mighty, powerful, precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, this is Women's Day. And we are here to be with the Lord. We are here expecting that the Lord will meet us. We need an encounter with Jesus. Yeah, and we're in the right place for that this morning. Yeah, you can lift your voices. It's hallelujah. It's good to hear the people of God in the house of God on this day of the Lord. This is the Lord's day. He's given us this day to rejoice and to be glad in Him. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is not the day that I have made. And this is not the day that you have made. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we can rejoice 
can be glad in this day because he has a table. He has spread a table for us this day. We want to eat what the master is going to serve us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. The God that we serve is great and he is greatly to be praised. He is great and he is greatly to be praised. He is great and he is greatly to be praised. He is great and he is greatly to be praised. And when I think about the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to sing about our great God. We're going to sing a few choruses. I'm sure that you know them. I want you to turn to the person next to you, if you have someone close to you, and say, thank you for being here. Say, thank you for being here to worship God with me. Come on, brethren. You've not come for me. You've not come for the team. You've come for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Hallelujah. Our God is greater. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Our God is greater. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. Sing it again. There's no God like Jehovah. Yeah. Sing it again for me. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God. 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 Oh yes. There's no God like Jehovah. If you know it, and all will see how how great is our God. Okay, I need you to sing it louder than me. Are you ready? How great is our God? Here we go. How great is our God? Sing with me. Yes, and all will see is our God. We're gonna sing it again, yeah. Oh, 
Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for who you are, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Everything you do flows from who you are. Everything you do flows from who you are. We give you thanks and praise for who you are this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Graves into gardens. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, King. We thank you, Lord. We come to be with you, Jesus. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I come to be with you today. I come to be with you today. No. Treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and you put me back together. Now every desire is now satisfied here in your love. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Nothing is better than you. Us too. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness. Show you my weakness. My failures and flaws. Failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all. And you still call me friend. Yeah. Because the God of the mountains. The God of the mountains. Yes. He's the God of the valley. Okay. 
Nothing is better than him and there's a reason. It's because the God we serve is alive. He's not dead. He's a moving God. He's a working God. He's an able God. He does stuff. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you pray, He hears you. Ah, so bring your stuff to Him and let Him change it. He's the change agent that you need this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You turn morning. You turn. the Lord for our new thing for our new direction for our new level 
for better because he has more for us better than you there's nothing better Jesus, we thank 
you, Lord. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you honor, Jesus. Do what you want to do, Lord. Yeah, yes. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to move. I'm trying to move. Lift your voices. Yes, Holy Spirit. Praise your God. Hallelujah. Praise your God. Hallelujah. Praise your God. Hallelujah. If He's done anything for you, praise Him. Yes. Testify of His goodness, Hallelujah. praise Him. Yes. Come on, church, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We've got Thank almost you. no minutes left. Hallelujah. 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 I just want to say Hallelujah. one quick thing Hallelujah. before we go into uh, Thank you, my worship. Hallelujah. 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 Last night I was uh, making a cup of Thank tea before I was going to bed. Hallelujah. And I looked in the glass jar and I saw that there was a tea bag, it was laying flat at the bottom of the jar. And I opened the jar to make my tea. And after I poured on the water, I looked up at the same jar and I saw another tea bag. And my, my first thought was, where, where did that tea bag come from? It was, it was standing vertically on the side of the jar. And the Lord said to me, you, you need to check your angles. Because what happened is when I went to make the tea and I moved the jar, the, the, the angle changed my perspective on what was there was different. When I thought I was down to nothing and I was going to make a plan to replenish the tea bags, <laughs> the Lord who is our provider showed me there was one there all the time. And he's saying to us today, would you change your angle? Would you let me reposition you so you can see what I've already provided what I've already done for you so as we go into this into this song I want us to be open to God to reposition us so we can see further and clearer so that we don't give up on the promises of God for our lives. Because other lives are connected to your life. Do you understand that? You're not by yourselves in this. perspective shift need God to renew our minds
you, Jesus. As we were singing that song, um, a scripture came to me from Acts 18, 10. And it says, Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak. And do not keep silent, for I am with you. And no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this day, in this city. Hallelujah. And I just want us to sing the chorus again, if we can. That we will not be silent. The enemy has tried to keep many of us silent. I can put my hand up and say the enemy has been trying to keep me silent. But I said no more and enough is enough. So let's declare it that the enemy will not keep us silent in Jesus' name. What a word. Hallelujah. Yes, and I will, and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always one more time. We will not be silent. We will not be mute. We will overcome. Continue to worship if you are feeling led to worship. Don't stop just because the music might be stopping. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I want to greet Pastor, Sister Donna, um, the CPC and everyone else. I want to greet Sister Simone and Pastor Mark Beswick, where he is in the building. I want to worship, worship. I want to welcome you all. Um, I want to welcome all that's online. And at this time, I'm going to ask Sister Yandy if she can come up and read a scripture from Isaiah 43, 15 to 21. Good afternoon, church. Can we all stand for the reading of God's holy word? Hallelujah. If you can stand, let us all stand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our scripture reading is taken from Isaiah 43, reading from verse 15 all the way to 21. I am the Lord, your holy one, the creator of Israel, your king. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and pa the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They are extinguished they are quenched like wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I gave waters in the wilderness 
and rivers in the desert. 21 and last. This people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. Hallelujah. Here in the reading of God's holy word, we say thanks be to God. Amen, amen. Um, I'm now going to ask Grace um, if she can come and read the announcements, please. Good afternoon, church. The announcements for this week are as follows. The Women's Discipleship Ministry invites you all to a prayer breakfast next Saturday, the 15th of July at 9am at St. Paul's Church at £10 per person and £5 for children under five. If you'd like to attend, please give your name and payment to Sister Doreen today. Pastoral Care Ministry. The pastoral care team is available to anyone who needs someone to talk to or is in need of prayer, please call any member of the team. At the 75th National Convention on the Women Discipleship Ministry session, the guest speaker will be Reverend Jennifer Porter, Porter Cox and Evangelist Sharon Mira, M Miller. Sister Rowena's I Am Enough production will be at the Marlowe Shop Centre in Hemel, Hempstead for four weekends during August. Please support where you can. You can like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube. If you would like to join our WhatsApp community to get the latest information on what's going on, men see Brother Dave, sister see Sister Doreen, and youth see Sister Amara. Our service times. Worship service at 1 p.m. Morning prayer meeting, Monday and Wednesday, 6 a.m. via Zoom. Bible studies, Tuesday, 8 a.m. p.m. via Zoom. Critical thinking, Thursday at 6.30 via Zoom. And our prayer meetings on Friday, 8 p.m. via Zoom. And then the birthdays. Okay, um, Azari. And Sanya Mario, oh, Sanya, sorry. Um, there's just one more announcement which Sister Dawn wasn't able to pop up. Um, and we have an opportunity to go to the House of Parliament's young people um, on Wednesday, the 26th of July, 2023. <laughs> Um, young people ages 7 to 18, so there will be a workshop on law and debating at the House of Parliament in London. Um, if anyone is interested, please see Sister Amara um, and she can send out the right information to parents. Um, yes, so I'm now going to ask Pastor to come up and if he can bless the offering and then the worship team can sing. Um, thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, it is so good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, I, I would like to just give two announcements. One is another fulfillment of the prophetic word. This morning, as the worship was going on, two men on two separate occasions came into the foyer uh, to observe what was happening, and one man of Muslim origin gave us an offering. And we have to say, God, you are, you are doing it. 
the first man, he was traveling with lots of baggage and he said, I need to go and tell my wife and try and get her to come back with me. So we need to just keep being in the presence of God. It's the presence of God who draws. It's the presence of God who does it. And we need to be mindful of that. Thank God. The second uh, announcement is that we are planning a time of district prayer. And that's going to be on Saturday, the 5th of August in Hitchin. I will get details to Sister Doreen and we will send it around. But this is a time of us coming back together again as a district. And uh, <laughs> praise God that the work is beginning. And so as we prepare to return our tithe and give our offerings, I say, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the worship that has been offered to you. We pray that it will be in your nostrils as a sweet-smelling savour. And Father, as we prepare to worship you now in returning our tithes and giving our offerings, Lord, I pray that our hearts will be right before you, that we will give what is in our mind to give. And Father, that it will be returned to us, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Father, that you will bless us to be a blessing. Father, that you will return all that the canker worm and the palmer worm and the locust has stolen. And Father, that we will be a, a force to be reckoned with within this community as we use the resources you've given us to bless this town. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. For those of you who are new to us, we have a card reader. So for those who want to give electronically, you can do so. The card reader will be over on my left. Please wait for the ushers to tell you when to come and to give. And give with a willing, cheerful heart in Jesus' name. Amen. We just want to give Amen. the Lord all the glory and the praise for those testimonies. Amen. We don't take that lightly. We thank Amen. God for moving by his spirit. As you bring your offerings to the Lord, church, please remember that the God that you serve, he's able. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask think or imagine that is the truth and I understand that your circumstances might be telling you something else but let's focus on the God that is able yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. the God that is able yes, to do it let's focus on the God that is able to do it brethren and let's praise and worship him this is a song I'm sure that you know. Mm. It says, God is able to do you, just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God Cause ah, he won't you, give up on you He's able Yes Oh God is able to do God, God is able to do Just what he said He would do He's gonna fall Give up on God. 
give up on you, yeah. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Sing it, sing it till you believe it. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Don't give up on your God. Don't give up, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. Last time, don't give up, don't yeah, give yeah. up on God, cause he won't, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Amen. Amen. God is able. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, I'm just going to ask Pastor if he can come back up again um, so that he can pray for our guest speaker and introduce this wonderful man of God. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are blessed in so many ways. I'm going to suggest to you though that sometimes we can be ungrateful. We are so blessed. And we need to be a people who give God thanks. I thank God for the move of his spirit. And I pray right now that we are preparing our hearts. I hope they are already prepared. That we've come entering his gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Ready to receive what God is depositing. And so I just ask you just to stand with me please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness, for your grace, and for your mercy. Today, Father, we are thanking you in advance for the word that you are going to bring to us through your servant, Pastor Mark Beswick. Anoint him from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Let there be no distractions. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I pray that our minds, our will, our emotions are open to the move of your spirit and the deposit of your word. Father, let your will be done. So be a hedge of protection around Pastor Mark. Hallelujah. Father, I pray today that deliverance will come. Deliverance from stubbornness. Deliverance from I'm going to do it my way. Father, now I pray every obstacle to the word, let it be removed now in the name of Jesus. And let your word, which will not return to you void, do the work that only your word can do. Move by your spirit now, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. Please remain standing as Pastor Mark Beswick comes to you. join us. My wife and I affectionately know him as the international worship leader. He's already saying no, no, no. He is from the City Life Ministries in Coventry and he's the Christian Life, thank you. Um, ministries in Coventry, he's the worship pastor there. And I pray that our hearts are open to the word of God as he comes. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Amen. Amen. Um, please remain standing for a few more moments and then I, I promise you I'll let you sit down. I'm just going to uh, get us back to where we were earlier uh, for the reading of the word um, that was read so wonderfully by Pastor Donna um, and prophesying Pastor Donna's new ministry. Um, um, Isaiah 43, I believe, is your theme passage. So we're going to go there. And I'm reading from the NIV version. It's slightly different possibly from the version that you have, but it's the Word of God. And I'm going to be reading... Uh, from verse 15 I think that's the text that you have and finishing at verse 21 and I'm going to pray and and then you can sit okay everyone good yeah. is everybody all right okay all right this is what the word of the Lord says it says I am the Lord your holy one Israel's creator your king this is what the Lord says, he who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together. And they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give, to give drink to my people, my chosen. The people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we cannot live by bread alone, but by the words that come from your mouth. So we ask you to speak. Lord, I don't want to speak. I want you to speak. Speak through me. Think through my mind. Speak through my vocal cords. Articulate your heart to us today. We declare that we are good soil for the good word of God. Lord, sow your seed deep into the soil that we may become fruitful trees planted by rivers of water producing our fruit in its season. Yes. We thank you for all that you're doing. Go beyond our asking, our imagining, our thinking, our believing. Just do what God, only you can do in us for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, Amen. and the church said real loud, Amen. before you see, sit, take your seats, please Greet two or three people. Tell them how beautiful or handsome they look and then you can take your seat. Yes, sir. Uh, it's good to be back here. It's been a while since I've been back here, but it's been... Um, it's been a blessing. Please take your seats when you can. Uh, don't get carried away. I said two or three people, you're all running around like you. Two or three people. And then take a seat. Um, it's a pri privilege to be here. I greet uh, uh, Pastor Cox and um, um, Minister Donna and the entire congregation here. And, and uh, again, the privilege of being able to be invited here to minister and serve you in this way. I also want to acknowledge the beautiful Simone. Uh, that's just, in case you didn't know, that's my boo right there. She did a great job um, leading us into the presence of God today. Um, so if you're looking for a title for today's message, it's uh, Forgetting 
to remember. Forgetting to remember. Um, here's a figure. Um, I'm quoting from a CNN article. It says, uh, um, it's a mind boggler. It says, we consume about 74 gigabytes, nine DVDs worth of data every day. It's amazing. We're able to process and make sense of it all. So how do you think straight in the age of information overload? Um, information overload ref refers to the notion that we're trying to take in more than the brain can handle, says neuroscientist and psychologist Daniel Libertin. We used to think that you could pay attention to five to nine things at a time, he added. We now know that that's not true. That's a crazy overestimate. The conscious mind can attend to about three things at once. And trying to juggle any more than that, you're going to lose some brain power. Information overload also leads to something called decision fatigue. It's why Albert Einstein is nearly always pictured wearing a gray suit, why Steve Jobs usually only wore a black turtleneck and why Mark Zuckerberg is almost always sporting his signature gray t-shirt. They didn't want to has the waste valuable energy making inconsequential decisions about their clothes. The UK is a TV binging nation. Almost half of UK adults spend three to four hours watching TV per day. This equates to 1,095 hours watching TV shows and films per year, a combined total of over 33.6 billion hours a year. The 2022 Screen Time Report further highlighted that UK adults spend up to around two hours on Facebook and one hour and 30 minutes on Instagram, one hour and 25 minutes on YouTube, and one hour 15 minutes on TikTok. This totals up to six hours of social media screen time alone per day. According to the latest mobile phone statistics of 20, for 2022, younger generations are spending less time watching TV and more time scrolling through social media, with those aged 16 to 24 spending the most amount of time on Instagram to peer, compared to any other age group. In fact, almost one in 10 people aged between 16 and 24 spend seven hours a day on Instagram. That's 2,555 hours a year scrolling through the image-focused app. Millennials, the last generation to grow up without smartphones and social media, as we know it today, are most active at setting screen time limits with almost half of those aged between 25 to 34 setting daily caps. Those aged 55 seem content with their time spent on screens with almost three in four not feeling the need to reduce their screen time at all. Experts suggest that we spend uh, no more than two hours of screen time each day outside of work parameters. This means that the majority of adults in the UK need to reduce their screen time by more than a half to stay within a recommended healthy range. Now, screen time can impact our mental health. Too much screen time affects your health, not only impacting mental health, but physical health as well, including eye fatigue, and irritated eyes and loss of focus. Now, while you might, this is a lot of stats, so just give me, I'm just giving you, setting myself up a little bit, if that's okay. Now, while you might find yourself wondering why is my memory so bad, forgetting is part of life. In fact, people forget surprisingly fast. Research has found that approximately 56% of information is forgotten within an hour. So you're going to forget my message, possibly, <laughs> in an hour. Hopefully not. But this is the statistics regarding forgetting. 66% after a day and 75% after six days. That's the stats on forgetting. The reality is that while the brain is capable of impressive feats, its capacity to store and recall details is limited. What does forgetting mean? Forgetting is the loss of or change 
in information that was previously stored in short-term or long-term memory. It can occur suddenly or it can occur gradually as old memories are lost. While it is usually normal, excessive or unusual forgetting might be a sign of more serious problem. There are, in fact, a number of uh, factors that can play a role in why people forget. Some common causes of forgetfulness include the following. Alcohol. Drinking alcohol can have a negative effect on memory, so it's best to stick to more than no, to no more than two or uh, one or two drinks per day. The depression also is a, uh, a symptom of, uh, uh, of loss of memory. Uh, depression includes low moods and loss of interest, but difficulty concentrating and forgetfulness can also occur with depressive disorders. Lack of sleep. Sleep's, sleep plays an important role in memory consolidation, so a lack of quality sleep can have a negative impact on your memory. Medications. Some medications can affect memory, including antidepressants, sedatives, and cold and allergy medications. Stress, excessive stress, both acute and chronic, can also play a role in causing forgetfulness. And, of course, age. Age-related forgetting is common, normal, since people tend to experience certain types of cognitive declines as they grow older. Um, and so, these are some of the symptoms of our society today. So we have a lot of information that's coming at us, tons of it through social media and other platforms, too much for our brains to handle. Um, and we'll forget most of it within an hour. That's the world that we live in, that's the society that we're facing, and that's where we are today. And so forgetting is a natural process, and it's important because the brain can only handle a certain amount of information. So forgetting is not something that should be troubling to you unless uh, you're forgetting your name and things of that nature, then we need to maybe investigate that. But generally speaking, forgetting is a way of the brain helping itself to sustain what's important. And the things that are not important, not vital, it moves aside because it's not important enough to remember. And so only when it, and it's, it's important for you to know this though, that the brain doesn't forget anything. Whatever information that it, you receive and that you experience through the right, entirety of your life, the brain stores it and decides what is priority over what is not. So there are things that you uh, haven't remembered in years, but certain things can trigger your memory so that that thing that you forgot all about suddenly comes back. Have you, anybody experienced that? Yeah? Well, maybe a smell or something, and smells are one, one of the most potent triggers to memory, and you smell something, and all of a sudden, it brings you back to when you were a child. Anybody have experienced that before? I know that I have, yeah? I grew up partly in Jamaica, and so certain smells uh, trigger memories of when I was back in Jamaica, and that was when I was five years old, so I can, you can remember things, but the, the brain decides which is important, which is relevant, which is needful for now. And, and because in this, we're in this world of technology, world of information overload, it's important for the brain to process the information that is vital. So here we are in our text today. Okay? Um, and Isaiah is prophesying from around 739 to 681 BC to a nation that had turned a deaf ear to the Lord instead of serving him with humility and offering love to their neighbors, the nation of Judah offered meaningless sacrifices in God's temple at Jerusalem and committed injustices throughout the nation. The people of Judah turned their backs on God and alienated, uh, alienated themselves from him, which created the need for Isaiah's pronouncements of judgment. Now, one of the greatest mistakes to is to forget your identity in the Lord. And in the opening salvo here we have, in the book of Isaiah chapter 43, um, this is what the Lord says, Isaiah 43 verse 1. But now this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. God opens up this to the prophet Isaiah in this chapter by declaring and revealing and saying to the Israelite nation, I just want you to know who you belong to. You, you Israel, you are mine. I created you. You are my people. And I don't want you to forget your identity in me. Amen? I need you to know and remember who 
you are and whose you are. Amen. Now, listen. Forgetting who you are leads to forgetting who the Lord is. Just as forgetting who the Lord is leads to you forgetting who you are. If you forget God, you're forgetting yourself. Because you were made in the image and likeness of God. When you move away from God, you're moving away from your true identity in God. And we are in a world today that tries to tell you who you are. And we are overloaded with information through social media, Instagram, and TikTok, and various different other platforms, all downloading detailed information of, of how you should think, how you should dress, what new, the latest dance moves you should do. And it's all about trying to give you identity and trying to make you an, align yourself to some other idea of who you are that isn't in line with what God says you are. So this is, the, this is important uh, because our text balances on this idea of forgetting to remember. If you retain information that you think is important, but God says is important, what you're doing is focusing on the wrong things. And now you are looking differently from the way God created you to look. And now you have an image problem. And God has found the Israelites and they are operating in rebellion and disobedience to him as usual. They have go through these phases and God has to begin by communicating to the prophet Isaiah. Let me remind you of who you are. Because when you forget who you are, you forget me. And when you forget me, you forget yourself. And when you forget who you are and whose you are, you're going to be open to someone else telling you who you are. And they dictating to you an image that doesn't align itself to God, God's image of you or the original intent for why God made you. God created you and says, you belong to me. I don't want to rush my way through this. I've got lots to tell you. But it's important to begin here with the idea of understanding that God begins the, this opening salvo with us in this uh, passage by, first of all, resetting and saying, listen, I need you to understand something about where you come from. I need you to understand your background. I need you to understand your identity. And your identity begins with me. Oh my God. Okay. So, in Isaiah 43, 15 in our text and in your theme scripture, uh, we, we find ourselves here um, where... Uh, the Lord is reminding them uh, of his identity. He opens up with this verse, as, you, as, you, as I read earlier, and it's been read a number of times, I'm sure, throughout this course of this uh, conference. It says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. He begins with giving four different expressions of his identity. It starts with saying, I am the Lord. The word Lord, Shem, uh, it, it, it's Adonai in Hebrew. It means master owner. The, the word of God says that the, Lord, the earth is the Lord's or the master owner and everything in it. You don't own anything that you have. And I know we think that we, have, we, we own stuff, but actually God lends us stuff. Even the children that you have is God loaning you children. We don't own anything. Everything belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it belongs to him. He is the master owner. If you have something, it's because God loaned it to you. The very breath that you're breathing is God's loaning to you breath. Without him lean, lean, lending you breath, you are not here. Oh my goodness. Are you with me? We don't own anything. We don't have any stamps that we can put our name to and say, look, this belongs to me. Everything that you possess belongs to the Lord. 
The earth is the Lord's. Are you with me? So, so I want you to be clear about this today. So would you put your hand up with me and say, I am the Lord's. Yeah, I belong to him. Yeah, the Lord is my, the Lord is my owner. Yes, this is important for us to understand today. That the Lord, he, the first thing he says to you is that I, the Lord, he introduces you to himself as the master owner. He begins positioning ourselves in that place, recognizing that you don't have decisions that you can make by yourself. If you're making them, it's because you're stepping out of understanding that you belong to someone. Oh, okay, uh, let me not rush. So I am, the, he says, the Lord. He begins with saying, the Lord, uh, I am the Lord, the master owner, your holy one. Again, he defines his relationship with you at the beginning, that, to tell you at the beginning that I am the Lord and I am your Adonai. I am the God, the master owner. And then the second thing he reveals is he is holy. The God is holy. He's the holy one of Israel. So the word holy is, the, the, the word means, uh, kodosh in Hebrew means uh, completely other. He's the otherness. He's not like anything else or anyone else. That You can't compare me to anyone else. If you look around, you won't see anyone like me. I am God by myself. There is no other one like me. I am God and there is no other God. You, we are, uh, we are need, God says, I need you to be holy as I am holy. He is distinguishing himself from anything else out there that wants to say that they are God. But he's letting you know clear from the beginning. First of all, I want you to know that I am the Lord. And secondly, I am holy. Besides me, there is no other. I am unique by myself. God. Are you with me so far? So this is God resetting, recalibrating us in the text. He begins by telling us that he is the Lord and then he tells you that he is holy. He is completely other. And then thirdly, he says, I am the creator of all things. The, Israel's creator. So he, not, he, he begins by telling you that he is the master owner. Then tells you that he is not like no other. And then says, I made you. I created you. You exist because I decided to shape you and breathe into your nostrils my breath of lives and you become a living nephesh because I am the creator. Everything that you see around you exists because I made it. The very chair you sit on is made of materials that I created in the earth so that you could have a seat for your bottom. I made that. The clothes on your back, I made the materials for those clothes. I made that. It can, it, we can keep going. Whatever you want to think about. The shoes on your feet. God says, I made the materials for the shoes that you're wearing. I, I made that. List something and God will say, I made that. Because he is the creator. The very hair on your head. God says, no, I made that. I made you to have short hair or long hair or nappy hair or good hair. <laughs> As we say in the West Indies. Yeah. But God says, I made that. I'm the creator. Your very bodies, I made that. Are you with me? The trees outside that you receive oxygen from, I made that. Oh my, this is why struggle is, is it struggles and it's, it's, a, it's a test for me in a when I come into the house of the Lord and we struggle to praise God because all you got to do is look outside and see the goodness of God the sky above you God made that the ground beneath your feet he made that he is the creator he made it he said, let there be, and it became something from nothing. Oh, God. Do you know who you're serving today? It's God, the creator, the one who spoke all things into existence by the word of his power. God said, let there be, 
and his words became substance. Words, you know, words became substance. That's who we're talking about today. We're talking about God. Creator. I want to, he's, he's inter, reintroducing himself to you. If you've forgotten about me, I am the Lord, I am holy, and I am creator. And the fourth thing he says is I am king. Every knee is going to bow down and every tongue is going to confess that he is king. The king of kings and Lord of lords. I am king. I sit on my throne and there's no one else but me. I, am, I rule all things that I look upon. I, I'm sovereign over all of it. I am the ruler. I am the king. Everything bows to me. Principalities bow to me. Even the devil has to bow his knee to me because I am king. When Jesus was walking through uh, the, the land of Israel and demons were possessing the man, they ran up to him and fell down and said, Jesus, what have we to do with you? Why are you tormenting us by your very presence? Even demons bow down because they recognized him as king. Come on now. This is... This is what he's doing. He's reintroducing us to himself. And he said, listen, you've got to recognize that I am Lord. You've got to recognize that I am, um, uh, I am uh, the, the king. You've got to recognize that I am uh, the sovereign Lord over all the circumstances that you're facing. I am who I say. I am holy. I am creator. I am everything that you need me to be. When you need me to be, I am God. Let me introduce myself to you hello because you have forgotten me and I know you've forgotten because I see it in your behavior that's the, what the text is telling us that's the, the prefix to the text the text is saying God is saying you're acting the way that you're acting because you've forgotten who you are You've forgotten, you've, you've rebelled, you've listened to the sounds and the voices of the nations around about you. You've been seduced by the noise of social media and Instagram and TikTok and everything else out there. And you've begun to move in that direction because you have be, uh, overloaded your mind with ideas that didn't come from me. And now you are letting the world shape you into something that doesn't resemble me. This is the text that we're in. So he says, uh, let me remind you of who I am. Israel strayed. From he led them out of um, Israel out of Egypt, God has been trying to accomplish one goal with that nation, to get the Israelites to love him and him only. But Israel strayed, constantly strayed. They constantly worshipped idols. They were always doing things that God did not approve of. They kept doing things God told them not to do. They were stubborn and wayward. And for this reason, God was going to punish them for being disobedient. Isaiah was given their, uh, the responsibility of prophesying what they would, would happen to them in the future. And God was going to send the Babylonians to conquer Judah. The Babylonians would capture the hundred of Judeans and take them as slaves to Babylon. But at some point, God would allow the Babylonians themselves to be conquered and the Judeans were, would be released to go back home. This, this is the prophetic word that was coming ahead of time to the prophet Isaiah. This is the context, the proper context of this scripture. I know sometimes we take it out of context and use it for our own personal devotions. And there's some value that we can get in that. But this is the original context of the text that we're in. The, this, this, this verse uh, addressed the people who were living in sin and refused uh, these verses, sorry, uh, addressed to people who were living in sin and refused to turn. In one sweep, Isaiah delivered terrible news, but also in the, in the midst of a, a message of hope. Um, and it's a wonderful to be a part of that promise that is recorded in Isaiah 43, 19, which we'll get to in a second. So the, the Israelites were chosen by God to be his own possession. 
Okay, uh, and we uh, the idea being communicated here is that um, he's he is more than uh, is he is more than the other peoples of the earth. That, that these people, God chose them um, out of all the other people groups in the earth. The idea is first mentioned here in Exodus 19 verses 5 to 6. Um, and it says this, now if you obey me fully and keep my commandment, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. Uh, although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. So God uh, already selected them out to be his treasured possession out of all the nations. And they were meant to uh, uh, understand their value. This idea of being a treasured possession is something that is um, so valuable that you would take it aside. Um, in fact, it was a, a same word that was used when David um, brought out of his own personal wealth and treasury resources to give to his son Solomon when he went to build a temple um, uh, for, of God. Um, David, out of his own personal treasury, his own personal possessions, uh, he gave out of that substance to his son so he could build a temple. That idea is that, that this is how precious the Israelites are to God, that those people were his pressured, press, precious and selected um, valuable possessions that he had himself his own personal stuff that's what God called them yeah and so this is what why God was so impacted so troubled by their behavior because he had selected them to be an instrument um, that would that would reveal his character to the nations of the world so their behavior was was imperative to them revealing God to other people how they conducted themselves, how they behaved, how they worshipped, what, what foods they ate, what foods they didn't eat. All of that stuff, was God had given them specific decrees, 613 commandments, so that they could reveal the nature and character to, of God to everybody else. So all the other nations can see God through their behavior, if that makes any sense. So that's what God, um, God had, had selected them as possessions, as his own personal possession to be able to do. So now... Let's, let's move this forward a little bit. So, so God says uh, to them, uh, in, in, um, I, I want to do something new. I want to do something. He, he, he first, he, he, he begins to recite the, the journey that they made from Egypt, how they came out of Egypt and how God, God delivered them and delivered the, the, them from, the, um, from Pharaoh and the Egyptian army that was pursuing them. If you remember the story, and um, God uh, made a way where there was no way. They were, they were, they, the Egyptian army was behind them, the, the, the Red Sea in front of them, and there seemed to be no escape. And then God um, caused Moses to lift up his staff, as you know, and, and parted the Red Sea, and they went on on dry land. I'm saying not only did he part the sea, but he dried up the, the ground too, so that it was completely dry. And so they walked on dry land, not muddy ground, but dry land all the way through yeah to the other side yeah so God did that and delivered it and then when the Egyptians started to try um, chase after them the word of God said that the waters covered over them and they drowned and so the enemies that they had the enemies that were pursuing them the enemies that enslaved them of their past God, God says this day you will see them no more there's so much joy in that scripture. So, uh, so this, this day, you're going to see them no more. The enemies that were pursuing you, whatever enemies you had in your past, whatever situations were chasing you from your history, whatever that stuff was, whatever it was sickness or whether it was lack, whether it was insufficiency, whatever stuff has been chasing you, God says, this day, you're going to see them no more. Oh, my goodness. That is such a precious promise. And so God, they, God delivered them in one day from all of their past. But then God says to them in this text, sit, uh, forget the former things. I know I did that for you. I, I know that I brought you out with a mighty hand and delivered. But I need you to forget the former things. And sometimes what happens with us is we get caught up in the things that God used to do. For us, uh, I, rem I remember. I, I remember when church used to be like this, and we're moving and we're looking back to a God of our past, and the revelation that we have of God in our past, we're stuck when God is a moving God, 
And so you see, the, if you're still operating in a revelation of God when 20 years ago, I want to update you. God is moved. Not that God has changed because he's unchanging. But like a river, you cannot step on the same body of water twice because it's always moving. God is always moving. And you've got to move when God moves. The revelation that I have of God today, bro, is not the same revelation I had of God 10 years ago. It isn't the same revelation I had of God five years ago. God is a moving God, and I've got to move when God moves. So God says to the Israelite nation, you, you can't live on the, the stuff that you used to have with me back then. You can't live on those testimonies of how I delivered you from the Egypt, Egyptians back then. You have to now get a fresh revelation of me today. When was the last time God did something for you that you could stand up and testify, God did this for me today or yesterday? Is your testimony 10 years old? Has God not performed any miracles for you lately? Is that God that served you back then dead? Is he, is he, is he run out of power? He is the same yesterday, today and So if we don't have any fresh testimonies of God, something is wrong. Something is not right. Because our God is the same and he wants to reveal something new to you today. And says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. God wants to do something new in your life today, church. Did you hear what I said? I said, God wants to do something new in your life today. Oh, that's not, that's not exciting enough for you. Okay, uh, let me tell you what that means. Um, uh, you see, the, the, the miracle work in God uh, that you read about in the Bible, that God apparted at Red Sea, he wants to show up for you. He wants to do a miracle for you. Uh, it, oh my goodness it, you, you see the, I think the part of the problem is bro part of the problem that we have is that we are thinking of God too small and, and the problem is uh, you're, you're praying to God for something that you can solve yourself you can, you can make that happen yourself uh, God the God that I'm talking about is a God that makes a way in a sea You see, if, you, if it's just a matter of you having to, to, to save up money to buy yourself a nice new car, you can do that by yourself. You don't need God for that. Uh, but if you've got cancer and you know that the doctors are giving you four months to live, that's where my God steps in and says, well, this is now my realm. I, I operate in that place where you run out of your power, your, your strength, your ability. I am the God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly. Maybe your prayers are too small for the bigness of your God. Maybe you need to believe God for something more than what you've been believing God for lately. I want to do something new. Is there anybody who's going to believe me for something new? Is there anybody that I can get in the room who wants to believe God for something new? That wants to see a miracle work in God operate in their lives today? Is there anybody in the room that still believes that that God who delivered the Israelites out of Pharaoh's hand is alive today and wants to deliver you? He hasn't changed. He is the same. But maybe we've changed. Maybe the issue is that we're not believing again in that God. Or maybe we believe that that God has reserved his power for then. For the former days. 
that's not relevant today and that's what the world will want to tell us that the God of the Bible isn't real it's a fairy tale and at best if he did those things he did those things back then and he's not doing those things again the devil is a liar my God is still able and my God's still doing miracles today you can be a candidate for that miracle if you just want to believe him there's nothing he can't do nothing God is able do you believe that God is able so he says behold I will do a new thing uh, and now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert it says uh, uh, the um, the uh, the good news translation says, "Watch for the new thing. I'm going to do it. It is happening already. You can see it now. I will make a road through the wilderness and give you streams of water there." Uh, message version says, "Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it?" There it is. I'm making a way through the desert, rivers in the badlands. Oh, Lord of mercy. Uh, the, this uh, thing that, this word used in the, in the uh, uh, this emergence of the new thing that we're talking about here, um, in the Hebrew, the word used is a word that's, that's closely translated to sprouting, like a plant that begins to sprout out of the ground and begins to grow over time. You see, uh, the new thing that God does um, let me just clue you up to this. Um, God, the, the, when it says God is doing a new thing, the new thing of God, it doesn't happen suddenly. And I know we have a, an idea of thinking that God's just going to do a suddenly miracle in our lives. Um, but uh, I want to help you with this. Very rarely does God do those sudden, and sometimes even those suddenlies that we think are suddenlies are not suddenlies. Sometimes those things that we think are suddenlies are things that have been growing uh, underground for a minute. And you see, when you put a seed in the ground, uh, the roots go down because it's trying to produce something that you're going to eventually see. Uh, but when you put it in the ground, it, it's already working. So when God says, I, I'm, can you not see it? it it's, God is saying, perceive what you cannot see with your natural eyes. He's saying, look beyond the emergence of the thing and see that actually the moment you prayed, the moment you asked me, the moment you invited me into that situation, uh, the new thing began that day. Uh, and so you, you gotta, if you want to see the new thing, you've got to keep believing me to see it. It's not that it hasn't already happened. It's that it's, it's, it's something that God was planted in your faith in God in the soil. And God says, just watch. Just watch the new thing is coming up. Just keep believing it. And eventually you're going to see it. And it will come out. And it seems like for someone that came along and saw your miracle, they think it happened overnight. That they don't realize you've been praying and fasting to the Lord. And then it suddenly happened and then everybody could see it. But God is saying, I'm doing a new thing. Uh, and then suddenly it's going to spring up because you've been trusting me and believing me all of this time. You put your seed in the ground. You've been watering it and suddenly it will come eventually. Can you not see it, he says. Do you not perceive it? Have you got no discernment? When a farmer puts a seed in the ground, he's not thinking nothing's working. He's saying, it's going to come up any time now. He knows it's coming because he's seen it before. Oh, have you seen him before working? Come on. I, I, God's trying to stir your faith in this room. And even if it's one person who's going to begin to come back to a place of profoundly believing God, that the God that you serve is able, that, that, that as we sang earlier, he's able to do more everything exceedingly abundantly. He can do it. He, he, he can do it and he will do it. Uh, but do you believe it? Do you believe in that God? Do you believe in him? 
And may, may, maybe you do believe him, but maybe you believe him from someone else. You believe that he'll do it for someone else, but not necessarily for you. And God wants you to know that he is your God. He is your God. He's not just your sister's God. He's not just your pastor's God. He is your personal God. He says, I, you are mine. You belong to me. He wants to do it for you. He wants to do it for you. He wants to reveal himself to you in a new way, in a brand new way, so that you can't just keep giving testimonies of what God used to do or the testimony of your mom or your testimony of your brother or your testimony of your uncle. It's like, this, this is my revelation of God. I believed him for this. I trusted him and he came through to me. Let me tell you that the same God who, who, who delivered Moses and the Israelites is the same God who delivered me in 2023. 2023. <laughs> oh my God. All right, Lord. So, um, so uh, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, I'm just coming up to close. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Uh, for, and now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way the wilderness streams in the west. The word um, uh, for, uh, translated former, uh, forget the former things in the Hebrew word is a Hebrew word um, that means um, ancient or eastern. Um, this is the, uh, uh, the adjectival form of a he another word, a Hebrew word called kadem, means east and antiquity or front. Um, this word in Hebrew uh, is also the word for past. In ancient Hebrew, the mind, uh, the, the, the ancient Hebrew mind, that the past um, is not something that's in that's that, it's not it's something that's in front of you, not behind you. Uh, okay, so uh, the best way to describe this is, uh, I know that it, from from us in, in the West, um, when we think about the past, we think about something that's behind us, uh, but th that's not how the Hebrew mind thinks about the past. The past is something that's always in front of you. The reason why it's in front of you is because you can see it. Yes, is that right? So just imagine yourself in a rowboat. And you're rowing to land. Uh, when you're rowing the boat, your, your back is to your future. Is that right? So you're going towards the land, but you're not facing it. You're facing forward and rowing backwards. Is that right? So you're rowing towards the land, which is behind you, where you're going, your destination. But you can see where you came from. So that's the idea in Hebrew of the past. The past is not something that is behind you. And it's, it makes sense because actually I can see the past. Because I know what it looks like. But you can't see the future. Right? So it's always going to be behind you. So when you're rowing into your future. Remember that movie, Back to the Future? Yeah? You go, you're rowing yourself back to the future. But you can always see your past. Because it's always in front of you. You, or you know what it looks like. You can tell everybody, you can describe your past because you can see it, but you can't see your future because you got your back to it. Does that make sense? Okay, so he says, forget the former things. Forget the former things. Forget it. Forget what you could see. Forget the thing that you, you can describe to everybody else. He says, forget that. Forget that. You, you're, you're putting too much weight on that thing. Forget it, because I, I want to do something new. I, I know it was great. I know it was fantastic. I know that you had a great testimony of what God did, but I want you to forget that now. Move on. Throw it away. Don't, don't speak about it again. Let's forget about that, because I want to do something unique for you. I'm, I'm going to do something new. <laughs> oh, Lord, help me. Okay, so... Um, God wants to do something new. Uh, but if you're stuck looking at how things were in a previous season, but th then you will miss the revelation of who God is in your present situation. God wants to reveal himself to you today in, in a brand new way. Uh, and, and he wants to do it today. He wants to do it now. He wants to do it now. It says, now it springs up. Now it springs up. 
now, yeah, it's sprouting up, as I said before, like a, a plant, it's sprouting up. God wants to bring that thing into your life now. He wants to say, it's sprouting, it's coming forth, it's now manifesting in your life. Uh, can you not see it? Have you not got eyes to see it? If you don't, uh, if you don't have eyes to see what God is uh, doing and revealing to you, we need to pray for your eyes to be open so you can see that God is working. He's making a way for you in the wilderness. Uh, why is he doing this? Why is he doing this? Let me help you with something. Let me help you because when God takes you on a journey of rediscovering him and um, getting your, resetting your faith, he always takes you by way of the wilderness. Okay. I know it's difficult for us to understand this, but this is the way God gets you back to recognizing who he is he takes you by way of a wilderness very difficult terrain hard terrain why because in that space where there is that you have to rely on and depend on God to get out of there you got to go back find your way back to prayer you got to find your way back to fasting you got to find your way back to worshiping why because now you're in the wilderness everything's not going the way that you expect to so God God is trying to reset you so he's got to take you this way the wilderness in the in the Hebrew is a place of testing God brings you, oh, do, do you remember when Jesus was baptized, he came out of the water and, and, and the, Lord, uh, the word of the Lord says what? He says, uh, the, the, the heavens open, the spirit of God descends upon him yeah, and, and then the, the voice of God speaks and says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, remember that? And then it says, the next thing is what? Immediately the Holy Spirit takes him into the wilderness, leads him into the wilderness that's what he does. The, the, uh, as he was baptized, took him out and put that word. Took him is a very forceful word in the Greek. It wasn't a very like, oh, Jesus, you want to come? He, he pulled him into it. He took him into the wilderness to be tested. So whenever God wants to get you back to a place of intimacy with him, he's always going to take you via the wilderness to get there. Because in the wilderness is where you refine your faith. You remember who you are and remember who God is. When Jesus was confronted with the enemy, Jesus just kept quoting scripture. It is written. He went back. He said, listen, this is how you get out of your wilderness. You got to know. This, you gotta, if you, oh, put it this way. Remember we spoke about the information overload. Yeah, and all the stuff that's inside you that you're taking in from the world system. Okay, when you're in trial, none of that stuff is going to get you out. No Instagram post, no TikTok post can deliver you when you're in trouble. No YouTube, none of that stuff is going to help you. When you're in trouble, the one thing that gets you out is it is written. Are you with me? So if your information that you're taking into yourself is predominantly social media, and I'm not against social media, I have social media accounts, don't hardly use them, but I do have them. But the reality is, the thing that is, I know is going to get me out is the word of God. It's the word of God. It's not the latest dance moves. It's not what the, the, this influencer is saying. It's what God has said. So that means you've got to get in your word, church. You've got to get in your word. You've got to read it daily. Meditate on it day and night. Oh, okay. All right then. You're vex? Yeah, you, you've, got to, you've got to get it. You've got to get it. You've got to get it in you and let it get in you. Because if you don't let it in you, you're going to struggle in that season. And God is going to keep pushing you into the wilderness because he wants to get proximity to you. He's trying to transform you and get you back to looking like him. Are you with me? You still love me, right? Of course. No more love me still? Okay. Yeah. So let me, in, let me end up. Let me end. It's too much to say. But look. So here... Um, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 20, 40 through 21 let me end with this verse in 
where you end. He says, the people I form for myself that they may proclaim my, pra- proclaim my praise. Okay? Um, in, here in Isaiah 43, 21, God rep- represents the purpose for which the nation of Israel were founded. Um, he, he, he says, the people I form for myself that they may proclaim my praise. This word formed in the Hebrew word is the word yatsar in Hebrew. It is the same word used in Genesis 2, 7 when God says, it says, God formed man. Yeah, uh, from the ground. He formed him. And it's, it's a, um, a process of pressing clay together to form an object such as a figurine. Yatsa is a potter's term. Yeah, it's, it's an incredibly descriptive um, word. So God says, the people I formed for myself, they will proclaim my claim. That God, God is saying that I'm going to, I'm, what I'm doing is shaping you. I, I'm squeezing you so that you can become like the image that I designed you to become. You're, you're bent out of shape. You don't look the way in which I designed you in the beginning. So if you're feeling a squeeze at the moment, it's because God is trying to reshape you to look like his son. The forming process, uh, 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 Jeremiah um, 18, you can see that where he goes to the potter's house and he looks at the, 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 the potter, he's trying to make something and, he, and, and the, mar, the clay is marred, it's broken and he has to reshape it, he has to reposition it, he has to re- work on it a little bit to get it back to looking like it could be something and God is saying that you are bent out of shape by the world and I'm trying to get you back into shape. And that process is a, that takes time for me to squeeze you a little bit and to reshape you a little bit so that when I look at you, I can see, yes, that is me. You got to let him do it, though. You got to let him do it. You can't resist him. You can't say, I don't want to be made the way you made me, God. I want to be like Sarah Jane down the road. I want to be like the Kardashians or I want to be like, no, no, no. You have to be the way God made you. You have to let God shape you because God knows exactly why he made you the way that he did. If, he, if you needed to be taller, God would have made you taller. If you needed to be prettier, he would have made you prettier. You don't need to go out and get surgery to say, let me do the job that God didn't do well. Sorry? If you don't have it, you didn't need it. Hello. I love basketball. I would love to have been a basketball player. But unfortunately, as you can see, I, I'm not tall enough. But God gave me exactly what I needed to be to do the thing that he called me to do. So I don't need anything more than what I have. I have exactly what I need. To be exactly who God designed me to be. And you are exactly who God made you. He made you that way on purpose. You're not an accident. He didn't mess up when you came into the world. You are exactly, perfectly made by God. Fit for purpose. Fearfully and wonderfully made. You are exactly how you should be. If you stop trying to be someone else. No one can be you like you. Be you, Naman. Be you. Because you're exactly how God wants you to be. Exactly the way. you. If you're a man, God wants you to be a man. If you're a woman, God wanted you to be a woman. If you're not a man, don't be a woman. If you're not a woman, don't be a man. Because God made you exactly the way he wanted you to be. He don't make mistakes. He is God. Controversial, I know, in this time. But you've got to preach the truth. You are exactly how God made you. So God said, these people I formed for myself, that they may declare my praise, that they may reveal my praise. What does this mean? What is God trying to say to us? Uh, The the reality is I'm, I'm coming down now. I promise I'm closing my Bible. This is what God is trying to say. To you and to me. And Peter, echo, Peter echoes this for us in, in, in 1 Peter 2, 9. And revealing to us that we are the, the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy people. Yep. Yeah? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. And then he says that he, he's a, that he called us to, to, to the praises of God. 
Yeah, this is what it, Peter is actually extrapolating the text from Exodus 19, verse 6, and he's revealing it to us that as believers, as um, uh, Christ followers, that we too are those priests, those uh, people who God has made and shaped to, be, to reveal his praises in the earth. So you, ultimately, the, the, the goal of God is so that when he looks down on you and in, on my life and sees the way that we're living, he can say like he said to his son when his son got out of that water, oh, I, well done. This is my son. This is my daughter. Notice that God, Jesus, God praised his son. At the very beginning, he celebrated him. And, and that's, what God, that's what it means when he says about uh, these people, are for, that they may reveal my praise. That God, It's not the people praising God, it's God praising them. It's God saying, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's my boy. That's my, he, he, he's, he looks just like me, or she looks just like me. They, they're revealing my nature and my character in the earth. And you're giving God an opportunity to praise you for being how he made you. Amen. That's the purpose of the text, the encouragement. So I'm going to pray now. I'm going to ask you if you believe that this word uh, was for you or impacted you in some way, that God spoke to you and maybe challenged you encouraged you or something some in some way that you maybe you know you need to look at and redress uh, uh, readdress the the time you're spending on other sources of information that is impacting you maybe you need to put a little bit of a, 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 a scheduling on your time on social media maybe you need to just look at how much time you're giving over to tv or other things that are not actually feeding your spirit man and shaping you into something that you're not meant to be. Maybe it's something else. Maybe you've just given up on praying. Maybe that you felt that um, you know the God that you, you served back in, the, in 20 years ago is is not the same God today, and that He's not answered. Maybe you've been disappointed. Maybe God. Maybe the prayer that you prayed that you thought was going to happen suddenly didn't happen when you thought it was, and then you gave up on God somehow. Maybe your faith has become somehow um, incapacitated because of things that have happened. But whatever the whatever it is. Whatever Ever, wherever you find yourself in that whole spectrum of journeying with God, if this word spoke to you and you felt, you know what, God, I need to realign myself to what you want me to be. If this spoke to you, and don't look up anyone else, doesn't matter what, if, if you're the only one that stands up, be the only one. Be yourself. Be you, boo. Just be yourself. It's all good. All right? So if it's you, and it's you by yourself, if it's you by yourself and you feel God has spoken to you and you want to say, Lord, I'm going to stand to say to you that I'm realigning myself. I want to be united with you. The unity that we want to talk about today is unity with God. Realigning ourselves with his will, his plan, his purposes, his image. If that's you, I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. If you want to be that person. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I want to pray for you, with you today. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to lift your hands to heaven as we pray. Those of you who are watching online, you may want to do the same. You may want to stand wherever you are if you're able to do that. And you want to lift up your hands to heaven as a sign to say, Lord, I'm bringing myself back to you. I'm bringing myself back to you. I'm presenting myself again so that you can use me, so that you can make me, make of me who you want me to be. I don't want to be fashioned by the world. I don't want to be designed by the social media, I want to be designed by you. Here I am. So Father, right now we come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. Here we are. You see us standing. You see us. You see our hearts. You've challenged us today and 
Lord, we thank you for the challenge. We know that you're doing it because you love us. And so, Lord, I pray as we realign ourselves to you and to your word and to your image and to, your, uh, to what you have designed us to be, we pray that you'll forgive us for giving more time and more space in our lives, more, Lord, more uh, territory, Lord God, um, to the enemy, giving the enemy more room in our hearts than, he, Lord, he should have. He shouldn't have any space, but we've given ourselves over to so many other things other than you and your word. So we pray, Father, let us realign ourselves again to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, will you forgive us for all of our sins? Forgive us for wandering away. Forgive us for not... Lord God, for giving up on, your, on who you are, for forgetting you, Lord God. And Lord, as we remember, as we, Lord God, forget the former things in order to remember who you are today. Lord, we remember that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. The unchanging one. And we, we receive right now, Lord, a new, fresh revelation of you open our eyes Lord God that we may see what you have been doing behind the scenes Lord God and for those of us who have given up on our prayers of faith in you Lord I pray let those let those visions and dreams be resurrected now in the name of Jesus all those prayers that we thought that was never going to be answered I pray Father help us to understand that you've been working on us suddenly behind the scenes Father Behind the scenes you've been working, Father, that it's, not, it's not time to give up now. It's not time to give up on God now. He's been working on it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to realign ourselves again, to believe again, to trust in you with all of our hearts and to lean not to our own understanding. And so, in Jesus' name, we rebuke the lies of the enemy right now from our lives. We rebuke the lies, Lord God, that the enemy has fed us about who we are that has not aligned itself to your word. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we declare today that we, Lord God, we thank you that we are yours. We belong to you. We belong to you, oh God. We are yours and you are ours, Lord God. We give you honor and praise for all that you're doing in this church. Glorify your name. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, why don't you give God a praise right where you are? Give him a praise. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I'm just going to ask Pastor and Sister Donna to come forward um, to pray over Mark and Simone. Um, and also to do a closing and affirmation. Praise the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for the King of Kings. I said put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I said last week if I had 10,000 praises, I couldn't praise God enough. Hallelujah. And if you had 10,000 praises, you could not praise God enough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just want to thank God for his power, his anointing, his appointing, his moving. I thank God for Pastor Mark Beswick. He is an international worship leader. I don't say that with any laughing. It's true. I ask you to put your hands together for the man of God. Hallelujah. We were blessed to have him in this sanctuary today. We honor you, man of God, and we thank God for you. He is my brother-in-law. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Please put your hands together for my pretty sister, Simone. Hallelujah. Who led us in worship today. Please put your hands together for her. Hallelujah. She is anointed of God and we thank God for her life. Thank you, Jesus. Now, brethren, I need you to put your hands together for yourselves, for what God is doing in your lives, for what God continues to do in your lives and in the life of NTCG Luton. Hallelujah. Thank God for the musicians. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the praise and worship team. We honor God. Hallelujah. And we bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I thank God for my hot chocolate, Pastor Cox. Put your hands together for him. I am blessed. I am so blessed. He is my wonderful husband and the father of our two wonderful children. And God has blessed us at such a time as this. Now, brethren, hallelujah. There is something we all need to do before we go. Praise the name of Jesus. We need to raise our hallelujah unto the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We don't know what tomorrow holds. 
I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know that it is in the Lord's hands. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Send, say the blessing, please. Praise, Praise God. I, I have a thought. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, I, I ordinarily ask for Sister Cox sometimes, I would say, call, call on her and say, just close us with the Lord bless you. Um, but I, my thought is, Pastor Mark, Amen. can you, you lead us in the Lord bless you? you and as a congregation, we will do that. Amen. But before we do that, we say, Father, thank you for Amen. Pastor Mark. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you for Minister Simone. We thank you for their ministry to us. I pray, Father, you continue to bless them, yes, enlarge their territory, yes, and keep them indeed. Be a hedge of protection around them. And Father, be Jehovah Jireh to them, the Lord, their provider. I thank you that they are, that you are their way maker. You are their promise keeper. Father, you will do exceeding abundantly above all that Mark and Simone could ask or think in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Before Pastor Mark comes. You know, God is really doing a new thing. We are united for a new thing. Philippians 4 verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. That goes on from what Pastor Mark was saying. And Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now I know that there are some people that are going to come forward and say, this is what the Lord has said I need to do in terms of my ministry. The Lord has spoken it into the atmosphere and I'm waiting for you to come forward in the name of Jesus. God is saying, fear not. Fear not, hallelujah, fear not, fear not, fear not. Your week is blessed and the benediction has been said and Pastor Mark is going to come in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Give him a hand as he comes forward. Give the man of God a hand as he comes forward. Praise the Lord. And keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, and give you peace. Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. And keep you, make his face shine upon you, and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you, and give you peace. Amen. 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 Amen, 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 Lord bless you now, the Lord bless you, and make his face shine upon you, the Lord turn his face away and give you peace. The Lord bless you right now. The Lord bless you and make his face shine upon you. The Lord turn his Glory. 
upon you and the thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and come on everybody let me say may his favor be upon you Children and their children and their children, may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children. May his presence, may his presence go before you and behind you, beside you, all around you, and with me. He is with you. He is in the morning, in the morning, in the evening, and you're coming, and you're going, and you're weeping, and rejoicing. He is for you, 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 he is for you. Amen. just want to greet you all and bless you all and just wish you have a rest of a number wonderful day today um, may you all get home safely and may God continue to be in your presence amen Goodbye. keep you the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace in Jesus' name.